Hello and welcome to another Wilderness Tamed video. Just going to have a look around the garden this morning. It's June the 22nd, 2018, so we've just had the shortest night and yesterday was the longest day. And this is the longest grass. So we're about, I think this is the sixth year, sixth summer since changing from exotic species to native wildflowers and shrubs etc and the soil is still pretty rich hence the grass is getting to this sort of height but if we peer in here we should be able to see evidence of yellow rattle there we go all those little pods it's going to seed already and it's uh, semi-parasitic, so it will, as it starts to establish more, uh, reduce the, the grass growth, the vigour of the grass. It doesn't kill it off, it just keeps it shorter and allows the wildflowers more time to, to establish. Oxide daisies, been selling lots of those on eBay lately as they've been flowering across the country on roadside embankments and roundabouts. Very popular with the bees, as you can see. Some plantain, there's a hazel shrub in the background there. Uh, the, f the oldest of the ponds with a couple of token frogs in the sunshine. If we come round here, I wanted to show you, I'm just going to step into the grass a bit. Bulbous buttercups. There's a marsh fig growing there, and then these guys with the cannabis leaves. It's not cannabis, it's hemp agrimony. Amazing plant, I love it. Good for late summer colour and excellent for butterflies. So this is one of the few remaining exotic shrubs that I have left in the garden. Uh, it's going to be difficult to dig out because it's massive. This is a butylon vitifolium. And uh, it's a beast of a thing. But it gets absolutely covered in flowers and again the bees and hoverflies love it so i've kind of let it stay so this is the little bog garden area so we've got buttercups red clover ragged robin you can see there and then underneath that iris leaf is a couple of spikes of marsh orchid Got some tufty seed heads of GM Rivali, the water avens, crested dog's tail grass, coming up now to meadow sweet, not quite in flower yet, still in bud, and then behind that the flag iris. Zoom in, oh it's a bit, a bit bright, but stunning flowers. So all these are native UK wildflowers, that's um, Carex acorus, the soft brush, Ranunculus flamula, the water buttercup, the oxygenator in there is hornwort, obviously there's some duckweed on the surface because you can't avoid that, um, so tiny little round leaves like mini lilies, that's frog's bit, this tall stuff in the foreground is purple loose strife, And none of these are planted in baskets because that's not natural. What I did when I dug the pond out, it had been a, a flower bed before. Um, I used upturned turves that I'd got cheap from a local DIY store because they were going yellow and uh, popped the plug plants of the marginals and aquatic plants into the turves and then they get established before they the grass reverses itself and comes back out, but it gives a good natural edge. This common figwood, again, you can see how popular that is with the bees. Tiny little flowers, got to look in quite close to see them, they're quite nice. So this is the pond where all the great crested newts come to. And, uh, and the frogs all spawn in this pond, they'll sit around the other two ponds during the summer um, but this is the one they come to to spawn in the spring I think we've got a couple just below us here Try and 
zoom in. Left a bit, right a bit, down a bit, there we go. Bang in the middle. Two big fat frogs. Fairly chilled out. Sometimes you get some female newts coming up to uh, lay eggs in the hornwort at the top there. I missed one yesterday. Uh, the spear shaped leaves are arrowhead. It's another couple of frogs. Some water forget me not. These round leaves are Calpha palustris, marsh marigold. And the woodland section we've got stinking hellebore, gone to seed. I'll be collecting those later. Again, sell a lot of those on eBay. And then in amongst this lot, there's some Enchanter's Nightshade, which is doing well growing under the pine tree. A lot of stuff does well in dry shade, worth hunting out. So you can see by the ugh, visible pond liner, nobody likes VPL. We've not had a lot of rain lately, so the pond levels are, are quite low. But this is one of my favourite plants, this white bobbly headed thing. This is common valerian. Uh, excellent for bees, got a really nice scent to it. Does well in a wet, boggy place. Some comfrey there. Ferns, I love ferns. I got rid of all the hostas that I used to grow and replaced them all with native ferns. Uh, and nothing seems to touch ferns. Uh, there's a bird's nest fern hidden down there. What else have we got in here? There's some uh, pulmonaria, the dark leaves with the spots. These purple flower spikes are hedge woundwort. It's a good spready one again, dry shade, does very well under trees and in hedges. Nice flower and uh, behind that those yellow flowers are greater celandine. Going under the birch. So there you go, that's the garden as it is in June six years after being sown. And back to the decking for me breakfast.